All right, in the last video, we worked on our coolant system. That's all connected. Um, so what we're going to do now is let's work on the alternator. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to first add a battery. All right, and I'm actually going to, so I've had an infinite electricity on the whole time. So now we're going to actually make it have to have its own electricity. So let's go logic, electricity. Let's just connect everything up. We don't have to be precious with this. Um, let's just daisy chain these through. All right. Um, we'll go to the gearbox. That's the alternator. Uh, actually, I'm going to be a little bit picky about this and go like um, go like this, and then I'll. It doesn't matter. I'll just hook it all together. That alternator will add current and it will charge our battery. That's all we need to do. Is hook it up and it will charge our battery. I was going to be ultra picky. I don't need to be. All right. So if the alternator is connected to this, it will charge the battery. All right. So that's the first thing. Now let's go into the um, our microcontroller. All right, so we need to add some nodes again. All right, so we need to um, add a battery node. So we want a number input from the battery. All right, we want to add a number. We want to output that number to our alternator. Okay, and we want to go to logic. And we'll pick these two nodes up. So I'll highlight them. I'll bring them down to the bottom here. All right, so we have our battery. Um, we have our alternator. Um, we're going to have to play with PID numbers here. So we, let's do another PID. Uh, where's PID? PID, PID, PID. PID is here. Okay, so let's highlight the PID. Control C. We will bring it down. We'll control V the PID. Um, I'm trying to remember the numbers I've used before. Let's try with a point 0.1. All right, so let's... Um, all right, so let's start getting ready to hook this up. So our battery is our process variable, right? Our battery is going to drain as we use electricity. All right. Um, we want a set point of 1. 1 is a 100% battery. Okay, so we want our battery always to be 100% charged. All right, so we only want enough clutch to get us 100% battery. So, like, if you just had this clutch 100% gauge whenever you start the engine, which a lot of people do, one, it's reducing the power you have to move your vehicle because it's turning the generator when it might not need to. Um, so, like, say the battery is 100% and you're producing twice the amount of electricity you need, you're just wasting fuel and you're wasting energy. This system will automatically increase and decrease the clutch on the alternator to provide is just enough electricity to always keep this battery topped off. Next, we want to take our battery. We want to put it to our process variable. So it's going to read the battery. Let's say the battery is 90%, uh, 0.9, and it wants to be 100. So the PID's going to say, okay, I want 1. I have 9. I have 0.9. So it's close. So let's do, I don't know, 40% clutch. If 40% clutch is not enough, it's going to increase. It's going to keep increasing. Now as it gets closer, it goes to 95, it's going to decrease the clutch some. When it gets to 99.99, it's going to keep reducing the clutch and increasing and keeping the clutch moving up and down so that it's just producing enough electricity to keep the battery charged. We're going to take that number. We're going to go out to our alternator. All right, now our PID controller. We want our PID controller to be on when... Um, our seat, our number six, is is uh, clicked. So let's turn that on. Let's move it just so that it's straight, so that my line's not in the way. All right, so we have a point one. Let's start with that. Let's um, we'll leave those alone. Those are fine, and we'll see if this is um, you know if the clutch is not if we're not getting enough clutch, we can increase the p value. If it's you know moving around too much, we can play with that. But we'll see if this keeps us charged up. So let's go update. Confirm. All right, let's connect our nodes. So I'll go to data. I have some new nodes here. This one's battery. It's going to go to battery. It's going to tell us. So if we read it, it says data output given the charge of the battery from 0 to 1, like we said. We're going to take our alternator uh, node, and we're going to connect it to the alternator. That's going to vary the clutch to either um, give us more recharge or less recharge, depending on how much we need. All right. And that should be it. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn it in. And I'm going to go into my options. And now I'm actually going to turn off infinite electricity. All right, so you'll notice when we start this up, our battery will start to discharge. As you see, we're, we're already discharged a little. All right, so we're going to go in the driver's seat. I'm going to press 6. 
I'm going to go full throttle. All right. Now, remember, I set it so that um, that's from our last video, but our coolant pump will do zero clutch when we're starting. I think I'll do that as well for the alternator, just so that when starting, we don't have any clutch to reduce, you know, to uh, put load in the engine. So we'll add that too. All right. So now we're up to full throttle. I can get off now. It, it will eventually catch up to where I have the throttle set. All right. Now let's look at the battery. All right. So it's still decreasing. Let's check our our uh, alternator on our clutch. Okay, so see how little clutch it is, but see how the clutch is going up, but very slowly? Look at our clutch number. All right, one is full clutch, right? Zero is no clutch. We're down to 0 .000219, and we're losing battery. Okay, we're not losing it very fast. You can see we're like four decimal places away, but we're losing battery. All right, so let's add some PID. Now, let's. I'm going to actually teach you a new piece of logic in here. So we have a, this is the easy PID control, I say easy, but it's, there's uh, PID controller and PID controller advanced. The advanced has some good features. We're going to have to add a node here. So let's, um, I think I went wide, let's go long. Um, let's update, just make sure we didn't um, break anything by changing the size of that. We did not. Okay, good. So let's go back in the microcontroller. All right, so now we have more space. So now what we want to do is, this is good for testing. So let's add a node. I added two. I can delete one. We want to input a number, and we're going to call that P. All right, this is our procedural variable. All right, so that's an input. We're going to go to logic. Now, the difference between the advanced controller and the regular PID controller is I still have my set point. I still have my um, process variable, but then instead of me having to go in here and type in P, I, or D values, I can make a node P, I, or D values. Now, why is this good? Well, I can take, remember, I just made this P here. I can use a keypad, and I can change the P value while the engine is running. So instead of me having to stop the engine, come back into the microcontroller, change a number, go back, start the engine, up, oh, that's not enough, come back into the controller. I can do it as the engine's running, and I don't have to keep coming back in and out. So let's go up here, and we'll take the 6 value. That's our turn our system on, to turn this PID on. And instead of using this old PID here, we're going to use the new advanced PID. And so the whole reason we did this is so that I can change the P value with a keypad to see where it's at. So let's update this. All right, now I'm going to we'll type in a keypad. Here's a keypad. All right, now I'm going to connect the node. So I have a logic here. I'm going to connect it to the P value. Now this is going to need electricity too, so we'll connect that to the um, battery. Let's spawn it. Now I need to give it a number. So I forget what I had on there. I think I had a, maybe a point 0.1 or something. Let's put a 1. We'll start with a 1. So that's going to give our p-value for our uh, alternator a 1. Let's go 6. Start it up. Let's go full throttle. All right, so our throttle is at full now. Let's jump off. All right, now let's look at our alternator. Now, you see how... Um, our alternator is, we're four decimal places there. We're now three decimal places. As you can see, we're still losing battery. Let's increase this. Let's just double it to two. Now our p-value is two. All right, let's check it. As you can see, now we're um, still losing. Let's go uh, four. So I'm just doubling the number. So I'm trying to get this... Um, alternator to keep adding more clutch. All right, now look at the number. The number is climbing. All right, so as you can see, we're now charging the battery. Now we're charging the battery very slow, so if we want, we can increase this by keep going. Right, we don't have to. We're charging the battery. That's all we care about, but let's double that. Let's make it eight, and let's look at our alternator. Now, as you can see, our clutch is only at 0.008% of application because we don't need it. Look at our electricity. We're back up. We're almost at 100% electricity. Notice our clutch is automatically decreasing. 
All right, so we made an automated um, generator here so that it is only using enough power that it needs to uh, recharge the battery. So it's not we're not wasting any power. So this is how you um, automate your, um, your uh, alternators or your generator. You can do this with a generator, a shaft driven generator as well. But you see it's using a tiny bit of clutch. It's only using as much clutch as it needs to recharge this battery. And as you can see, we are recharging. As you can see, it actually stopped recharging um, because it's, pro it's probably perfect. So right now at uh, 0 .004508 clutch, it's, it's perfect. We're not gaining electricity, we're not losing electricity. It has reached uh, balance where it's producing just as much electricity as we need. All right, so that's what the PID does, is it automa automates it. All right, so now we've figured out our, um, our number. So let's actually, we'll go in here, we'll uh, delete the keypad. Oh, uh, I shouldn't have done that. What I it was at, I set it to eight. So I remember my number. My number was eight. So remember, we use that advanced PID, which is all I use now, because it allows us to, um, while we're actually running the engine, to change that number. I would have had to go in and out three or four times. It would have taken me 15 minutes to figure it out. Instead, it took me a couple minutes. So let's take a constant number. Let's plug it in the p-value. Let's change this to eight, which was our number. And let's get rid of our P here. So let's go back to logic. We'll get rid of the P. We can go back to properties and we can make our microcontroller smaller again. Um, and let's update. I think I remember I wanted to add one more thing on here. Um, okay, remember I don't, it's, it's not a big deal, but we could make this so it doesn't add any clutch for the battery if the engine's um, not on. Um, yeah, we won't bother doing that, but we could put that in there so that if the engines, if the starter is on, it won't allow this to come on. All right. So that pretty much sets up our engine. Um, so I'll go through a quick overview of what we've done here, um, through this, you know, uh, module engine basic series. So we started out, we worked on how to put an engine together. We worked on, um, getting the engine to actually run. We then automated it so that it will automatically clutch. We worked on um, how a gearbox works and what our settings and our ratios are. We then um, made it so that we could put the throttle forwards and it would automatically rev the engine, clutch the engine, and turn the prop. When we went to zero, it automatically revved down the, let the engine rev down, zero the clutch, when we put the throttle into the negative territory and pull the throttle back, it will automatically rev up the engine, add clutch, and put our gearbox in reverse so that we go backwards. So these are all things we need for a boat. Then we put in our cooling system so that we can cool our engine. And then we worked on the alternator and we made it so the alternator will only use as much clutch as necessary to keep our battery at 100%. All right, so that concludes this series. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to start making a career boat, and I'll make a series on that. So we'll uh, take what we learned here. We'll build a hull of a boat. We'll build an engine for the boat. We'll make it do all these things. All I'm going to do is I'll copy this microcontroller, and we'll put it on that boat so you can actually see it in the water. We'll cool it with raw water cooling, and uh, you can join me on that. Um, I'm going to post this in the workshop and I'll put some links in there so you can get this, um, you can get the microcontroller, and you can use it on some of your own creations. Alright, thank you very much for watching.